What is going on? Welcome to episode 108 of the Nintendo Powercast. I'm your host, N64 Josh, and player two. Look, it's not Eric, I know. Nightcrawler, what's up, man? How are you? It's it's not your boy. It's not nope. your it's not your boy. <laughs> it's, it's Nightcrawler. Player three, Vicky Kitty, how the heck are you? I'm doing great, man. Um, you know, just Coming off of CEO and playing some more Smash Ultimate. You are so lucky. I'm so jealous. And that hat. <laughs> and guys, hat if you hat. guys are only listening to the audio version, you gotta you gotta go check out the video and see her Smash Bros hat. It is it is glorious. It is Did you get the full the full swag bag? The the bag? I did, I did actually. I actually have um to give away when I get a sub button finally when I've dedicated myself to streaming 30 hours um in one month. I actually have like a Nintendo giveaway where uh, I was gonna give away um some of the Smash Ultimate like exclusive stuff that they gave away for at E3. So it's like a Smash Ultimate pin. Oh um Smash gosh. Ultimate, like it's like a banner, so it's like the Smash Ultimate logo on this banner thing. And uh, a Smash Nintendo Switch pin as well. So stuff like that. So they gave us like a bunch of little goodie bags, but I managed to catch some extras to give away to uh, some dedicated viewers. <laughs> Perk, perks of the job, I guess, right? So, yeah. I mean, it, it's a good time as any to tell us where they can find you on Twitch. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you get to tune in at Vicky Kitty, V-I-K-K-I-K-I-T-T-Y. I always elaborate on that. Um, because some people just type in V-I-C-K-Y. <laughs> All right. And I will have a link to it in the show notes. So you guys don't don't sweat it if you didn't get it. So the music you just heard is from On Being Human. You can check them out on Spotify and YouTube. Remember, this is an unofficial Nintendo podcast. If you want to get yourself a free book from Audible, go to audibletrial.com slash NPC. There you can pick up something like uh, Blood, Sweat and Pixels. Super good. And uh, Console Wars, of course. You guys, you know, I recommend that every week. So go check that out. It's audibletrial.com slash NPC. Guys, the chair I'm sitting in is from OP Seat. Go to n64josh.com slash OP Seat. Going through that link will automatically save you $10 off of your purchase. Right now, all chairs and tables are all chairs are $50 off and all tables are $100 off. That's OP Seat. Go to n64josh.com slash OP Seat. There we go. That's the ads. Let's get to the announcements. Hey, listen. All right, we do the show live, twitch.tv slash n64josh, usually at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We started a little early tonight because, well, I'm actually going to be on the Nintendo Shack podcast. So you guys probably get to hear my voice like twice or three times, four times this week if you really want to. I, I, <laughs> I don't know, but Nintendo Shack, go check it out. It's another Nintendo podcast. Good stuff. Good friends. Go, 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 go check it out. I, I don't know when it goes live, but... Uh, you know, I'll tweet it out. I'll tweet it out for sure. So, but this show happens 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Tuesdays, Thursdays. I recently took a bunch of photos of my retro collection. If you guys want to check those out, you can go to n64josh.com slash photo. And I'm going to be displaying those in an art walk this week in my hometown. I'm pretty excited for that. That's why I'm telling you guys about it. Still working on my book, Another Castle. Some versions have gone out and are getting looked at. So we're getting closer. And uh, tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Friday mornings. Tomorrow, we're looking at Philippix. It's an indie title and Crash Bandicoot, Insane Trilogy, and possibly Pocket Rumble. I don't know. Maybe. It's finally out. Can you guys believe it? Like, it's here. Pocket Rumble's here. So there you go. Pretty exciting stuff. That's uh, that's our announcements. Let's uh, we're going to just jump right into our talking points. Tonight's focus is going to be on our guest, Vicky Kitty. We're going to talk about her history. We're going to talk about like her history with Nintendo, um, working with Nintendo and uh, commentating all of it. We're going to we're going to we're going to get down to it. So let's uh, let's jump into this thing. <laughs> All right, Vicky. Hey. What's what's the deal? <laughs> what's your history with Nintendo? Let's uh, oh, let's go man. back. Let's get back in the, the, the time machine here and where did it all start? So let's let's jump all the way back. Um I it all started. I was about uh three to four years old. Um uh, my mom was still going to college at the time, so she used to drop me off at my grandmother's house, um, where my uncle was still going to high school as well because, you know, I have a pretty young family. So my uncle actually used to have an SNES. <clears throat> and 
I was able to play my very first Mario game on his SNES with my grandma. And it was an experience because that was when I determined that I never wanted to be player one because player one was basic. I wanted to be player two because <laughs> I liked the green man. I did not like the red man. <laughs> and um, that actually brought my grandma and I a lot closer. But not just that, it sparked up my love for video games. It, it all started with Nintendo. So Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. That's the yes. that's yes. the start. Okay, that's that's really cool. Were there any other games uh, on the SNES that you played on the regular? Literally just that one. It was always I want to play Mario. It was always just that <laughs> game. And uh, since I was so young, I w- I didn't really know about the other games. And my uncle the whole time had no idea we were playing in this room. It was always a secret. So every time we had to pick them up, she was like, "Okay, right, make sure it looks like it was never touched." <laughs> <laughs> That's- Josh, you probably got good at that hiding that you only went over your 45 minute time allotment, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I had 45 minutes. My parents allowed me to play. So I had to like I had to make sure everything looked exactly right, right back how it was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so you never did you ever get your hands on Mario All Stars for the SNES? No, actually, I didn't. And actually, um, I got the mini version. I got the mini, the one that recently came out, the Nintendo release. Mm-hmm. So I finally have been able to like, I haven't been able to beat a game yet because I'm so like distracted with all the games on the system. So I've been playing like a little bit of each game. I'm like, I can't finish them. I'm sorry. Like, eventually I will. But at least I was able to see uh, what, what which game was it? All-Stars, right? Um, No, I actually was able to play Mario was it RPG? RPG, was yeah. It that? Yes. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, how have I never, how have I never played this game before? And it wasn't until like a few months ago that I played it for the first time. I'm like, I know four year old Vicky would have loved this. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Actually, the one, the one I want to say, the one console that I played, um, that belonged to Nintendo, that I was able to actually recap a memory of it was a Nintendo sixty four. I am twenty two years old, so I'm pretty young. Um, but on the Nintendo sixty four, it actually wasn't even my console; it was my father's. And we had like a uh, Counter Strike, we had Star Fox, we had um, Super Mario sixty four. We didn't even have Super Smash Brothers. I never even played Smash Brothers sixty four. Funny enough. Um, I play obviously now, like I, every time I go to Super Smash Con, I was able to play it. But back in the day, I never got to play it. Um, what are the games? What other games that I play on there? I think I want to say Super Mario 64 was the game that I played avidly. Uh, and Mario Party. Oh, my gosh. I cannot forget Mario Party. I was a single kid for seven years, so I needed something to entertain myself. So you, you've been you've experienced the new Mario Party, right? At E3? Uh, I actually didn't. You I didn't. Did not I, I was hoping. I was hoping to see if you could say if it was mm. back to the the greatness of one, two, and three. I actually wasn't. I'm not too sure if it was out on display. I did see the new Pokemon game that was out. I think. Yeah, I think Mario Party was out there, but my eyes were all fixated on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. <laughs> like I try to play as much as possible because when uh, before the Invitational, before the commentators um, had to do their jobs and stuff, and we were able to play. I was like all fixated on notes. I was like, I know the game is right in front of me, you guys, but I just need to know as much information as possible before we go on stage. So I'm just like, I had like a notebook. I always carry a notebook with me and I'm just like, "Uh uh-huh. Yes, yes. Spoke to left and spoke to Nairo. And I was just trying to get as much information as possible about the game. So I couldn't get to play Ultimate as much as I liked. But after after like the whole Invitational, that was when I was able to play more. I see. I see. So... I got to know with Mario Party, did you get the blister in the center of your hand (laughs) and have to get the special glove sent to you from Nintendo? I broke the stick. (laughs) (laughs) I broke the stick. (laughs) I broke the stick. And I was such a competitive kid, too, back in the day. Like, I want to say, like, the first Nintendo system that was meant to be mine as a gift was the GameCube. That was because um I come from a very old school family where my mom was very like, you know, video games are for boys and then you play with toys. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> no, because my dad was a very avid gamer. So it was very difficult to grow up in that type of environment where I couldn't game. So eventually they caved. They got me a GameCube for Christmas. Um, I remember that was like my favorite Christmas ever. I remember how I found the GameCube. They didn't even put it under the Christmas tree. They put it in the garage underneath a laundry basket and they made it 
they played it off. They were trolling me. They played it off as if I had no other gifts left. So then I go to the garage because they're like, do your laundry. So I go to the garage as like being an eight year old kid. And I see this GameCube underneath the laundry basket and I flipped and it was all part of plan. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, thank goodness. Like I got my GameCube, got the Mario Party on the GameCube. I got literally everything. Got the Harry Potter game and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I had uh, Melee. I had the Wind Waker. I had the I got the GameCube version that actually had the game of the Legend of Zelda where it had um Legend of Zelda, the original Legend of Zelda, all the way up to the Wind Waker 10 minute demo. <laughs> you still have that it? was yeah, I, I don't know if I still have it, but I definitely checked online and they're selling that for two hundred dollars. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what did I do with my copy? <laughs> yeah, you gotta find that. Yeah, I, I regret I, ever sell I regret ever selling my Super Nintendo. Oh, yeah. oh man yeah good days good days those are honestly my favorite days i want to say my favorite system was the gamecube oh absolutely like we yeah we reminisce about that that console regularly is was that your introduction to smash bros um yes for melee in okay. melee in particular because my sister was born when i was seven years old so uh at the time when she was like three to four years old uh one of the first games we used to play together was actually melee okay so the GameCube has a few games that like that uh, basically were introduced on that system. One of them being GameCube or GameCube being Animal Crossing um, oh. was. Is that a game that do you play Animal Crossing? I didn't play it on the game on the GameCube. I actually played it on my DS. I okay. had like three DSs because <laughs> that was a disaster as a kid. But um, aside from the GameCube, I actually. I didn't find Animal Crossing through like commercials or anything. I actually found Animal Crossing through my very first sleepover. Sleepover, my friend, um, her name was Perry. And uh, she had Animal Crossing. And this was like in the fifth grade. And she was like, this game is awesome. You should try it. And I tried it. That was my first time playing a game that involved like customizing your own house and, you know, doing your own stuff in your own taste. And I, pl- I remember she went to bed like at eight o'clock at night. We're in fifth grade, mind you. I played that game from the moment she went to bed on her DS till I want to say four o'clock in the morning as a kid. And it was so addicting. I actually had no idea until way later on in the GameCube lifespan that Animal Crossing was on the GameCube. Oh, you got to go back sometime. You got to see what it was like. You know, the I, best I'm purring. Animal Crossing for Switch. What? Yes. Yes. The, well, probably the best part about Animal Crossing on the GameCube. Like if you go into my house on that game, you go down to the basement, there's like 15 NESs and you can play every one of them. It's a different, each one of them is a different game. And that's amazing. You had to like go and dig them up on this weird Game Boy Island. And d- yeah, there was all kinds of, it, it was tricky to get so like Mike Tyson's punch out was like the toughest. It was probably just called punch out featuring Mr. Dream more than likely. I don't think it was Mike uh-huh. Tyson sitting longer, but, um, but yeah, that was probably one of my favorite things. Like go like, here I am supposed to be playing this, you know, the, the best new system back in the day. And I'm like, I could play old Nintendo games on this thing. This you're, is just the- playing, you're just playing ROMs <laughs> yeah. and, and this, Animal Crossing. This is the best, you know? Oh my gosh. So, back in the day, man. Those games are so fun. Okay. I, I loved, um, sorry, I just, Prisoner of Azkaban was actually one of my old Harry Potter games too. And I got that for the GameCube. And I remember playing that game and they had like mm-hmm. Nemo come out for it. And I think it was the Incredibles. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had all that kind of stuff on super nintendo too licensing was was all over the place absolutely it was great so here's uh here's my favorite question you ready oh hit me what game have you never played or never beat that we are all going to judge you for oh man <laughs> um, okay <laughs> I there's there's a few actually. Perfect. I I have never played a Metroid game. <laughs> Do you feel the judgment right now? Can you feel I feel it <laughs> through the silent eyes of the internet right now. I've also I've never played a Xenoblade game. That, that's a little I, I won't judge you quite as uh, yeah. uh I won't judge you quite as much for that. Metroid, unacceptable. It's unacceptable, yeah. especially if you had a DS or a uh, or a uh, Game Boy Advance? I don't know. Did you have a Game Boy? I did. I did. I actually have them like right next to me somewhere. I had all of them. And the game. I also had the flashlight that would go over your Game Boy Color that you at night when you would play since you couldn't see the screen, you would have. You need the flashlight. 
back in the day. It was old. I had um a white boy. <laughs> yeah, actually. Um yeah, I want to say those two games. I'm trying to think of more. There have been a few games that I've recently played that now no one could judge me for. And it was Final Fantasy VII, which I recently played it, and uh, Fire Emblem. Okay, yeah. I've so still never my played first Final game Fantasy. that I started with Fire Emblem actually was Fire Emblem Seven oh. with uh, Lynn, Hector, and Ullwood. And then I'm actually right now playing Fire Emblem Six with Roy. And I'm also at the same time playing Mother 3. So you you are writing all those wrongs. <laughs> I am writing now as I'm 22 years, <laughs> a little too late, but it's OK. Better late than now, right. OK, well, so Super, Super Metroid is yep. on your SNES classic. So it's just there waiting exactly, for you. exactly. Exactly. Yes. It's one of the one of the games I actually haven't started playing yet. So, oh, or I, if you're taking your DS played, around with you, you can download it, too. That, too. I haven't played uh, Castlevania either. Have you played uh, Curse of Bloodstained Curse of the Moon? It's close enough. On the Switch? No, actually. You should, you should check it out. It's really good. Really good. Um, <laughs> so, after you play Super Metroid, and you beat it, and you're so excited, hit me up. We'll have you back on so you can talk about the greatness. Oh my god, so we talk about it. Yes. Uh, the greatness <laughs> I'm literally about Metroid. to Google it. Like, it, wh- where do I start? <laughs> like, how do I start this? Do I start on the SNES? Yes, just start there. That's where okay. you want to start. Like if Got you it. if you have the NES classic, you can play the first Metroid. And there is some fun to be had, but it's nothing compared to Super Metroid. Yeah, Super Metroid is better. But put it to you this way. I was probably 12 when I beat Super Metroid. And it was the first time that I ever had any kind of an emotional experience in a video game. Honestly, it's probably the first and last time I ever had any kind of emotional experience ever. But um it it was it was awesome. The end of that game, I was like, oh, my gosh, it was so, so good. Now, I played a lot of two, so that helped. But the way they start Super Metroid, you know exactly what happened at the end of two. And so you can you start right okay. up in you start right up and you just start going and you're probably going to get stuck. But just just stick with it. Maverick in the chat saying Super Metroid easily top three SNES games. Yeah, it that game is in my top five for all time games. Like I love, love super Metroid. So, uh, I, I, I am curious to see how you like it. So you'll have to let us, know. I, I actually, yeah. Based on what people are saying, I'm definitely going to try it out. Now I have to, like I put myself on the spot, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there was no actual judgment. It was just, uh, <laughs> It's no, just, there was definitely I, judgment. I, Hold on. <laughs> there was definitely judgment. Look, it, Play back the tape. The reason I asked the question is because I'm judge continue. I've never beat Super Mario 64 and my name is N64 Josh. They judge oh me. Oh my god. I'm, he doesn't even own the he doesn't even own the cart. I don't even own the cart. And so No, I'm, it's such a good game. I don't <laughs> hey, I have the ROM, I have it on DS, but I don't have the actual Mario 64 cart. So they <laughs> They mock me on the regular. So I'm like, you know what? I need to ask every guest so that they can feel the judgment I feel daily. You know? <laughs> so, well, let's uh, let's fast forward a little bit here. How did you get into working with Nintendo? Um, it all started when I started uh, commentating, actually. And I'm going to say that they reached out to me on recommendations from other Super Smash Brothers community members that they've been involved with in the past. And they were looking for a female commentator, actually, to commentate a 12 and under tournament. I guess uh, more so to appeal to the kids so that way the kids, like, you know, it, it was more so commentary so that way the kids could understand the basic terminology but as well as make them interested to get into the competitive scene as well if they want to do that. Because they actually used um, competitive rule sets. Um, not to the book, like not, you know, word by word from the book, but they still like took competitive rule sets and they try to implement it for the kids. And um, they basically called me up and they're like, hey, we w- we're doing a San Diego Comic-Con 12 and under Smash Brothers tournament. We want you to commentate you down. I'm like, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> like, yeah, you have to explain it in basic terminology, though, because um, this is mostly for the kids. I'm like for the kids. And I did it for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for the kids. And it was honestly, it was amazing. I actually remember the kid's name that won. I believe his name was Ivan. And he was a cloud player. Um, and I forgot who was the other player, but I believe the other player that was against him was a little Mac. And Ivan actually reset bracket 
because he, he was coming back from losers after losing, I believe, to a Bayonetta player. Um, mind you, everyone, everyone in this tournament is 12 and under. And these kids are doing like tournament ish like moves. And yeah. I'm like, all right, we see you got combos. Like, this is great. <laughs> now these kids have access to YouTube. So, you know, they're, they're a lot more knowledgeable in terms of like what they see on the Internet. And I was I had a really fun time. I was able to commentate with uh, JC Dotface. He works at Nintendo Treehouse. Shout out to JC. And uh, it was him, actually, that I worked with for that event. And after that, we've basically been working for the other uh, Nintendo events. It was it's between uh, JC and Ed Murray. OK. All right. So I'm going to this. This seems like a good a good time to mention this. So recently, obviously, I mean, you did the, the Smash Bros. Invitational, right? And Nintendo yeah. versus tweeted out. I think Nintendo even tweeted out that you were going to be one of the uh, commentators. And so I was yeah. like, well, who's Vicky Kitty? Right. I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm just slowly <laughs> learning. I'm getting into the smash scene and stuff. Right. So I, I click on your Twitter and I read your bio and I actually should pull it up right here because it's probably, <laughs> it's probably one of the greatest bios I've ever read on Twitter. You guys read, Oh, did it change? Oh no. It's the pin tweet. Here it is. The pin tweet is what I read. It says this. I'm the one who sounds like a little boy when I commentate your matches. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. follow like there's the, follow I had right to. There. <laughs> so I had to, is there's gotta be a story behind that, right? I mean, I play a lot of games in general, especially on uh, come from a very team shooter background, actually. So um, in the past, whenever I play, so I was like, hey, aren't you supposed to be in school? I'm like, I graduated school <laughs> years ago. And they're like, you sure you're not in middle school? I'm like, yes, I promise. I had another little boy once say the same thing to me and I go, why aren't you in school? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm like, I've never been roasted this hard in my life by a child. It was so funny, but I embrace it because I, I know I, as a female, I don't have a very high pitched voice, but I love it at the same time because I feel like it's so radio friendly. <laughs> There you go. No, you're rocking it. It's awesome. I just, I literally laughed out loud when I read that thing was like, okay, I want to, I want to know more. So, um, okay. How about, so it sounds like we got to go back even further than Nintendo. How did you get into esports? Like how did Nintendo even know about you? Like what, how did it all happen? So I've been playing smash brothers. Um, I started from the game that we shall not name. <laughs> but before that one actually it started from brawl then proceeding towards uh playing the different version of brawl and we used to play in uh my friend's living room and it was a group of us and we always used to be like yes we're the best players in super smash brothers um within the city of miami that's how it all starts and then we used to challenge other squads to come over and we would fight them. And it would be a huge free-for-all match, by the way. Not even competitive whatsoever. We didn't know what we were doing. And <laughs> um, from there, we were like, hey, like, we just found out there's actual tournaments for this. And we think we're pretty good, so let's go out. And uh, we started at Versus Gaming Center, which is located in Pompano Beach, Florida. We got rocked. We <laughs> got we We did awful. It was... We were like, wow, we really are terrible, <laughs> but we wanted to learn more. We wanted to get better at the game because we have so much fun playing naturally with our friends. Um, and then from there, the, our friend group, we, we split in terms of who wants to play competitively and who wants to keep it friendly. Uh, so that way, whenever we gather together, we do both. We, you know, we we'll play competitive matches, but we also do some friendly matches. You know, you guys have heard all this brawl where we literally just do a bunch of free for alls with items on, just have fun with it. Cause you know, at the end of the day, it's still smash. As long as you're having fun, you know, that's the point of the game. And from there, I started uh, competing a lot more often. I would go on my own accord. I wouldn't really go with many people. And, uh, Eventually, I want to say four months into me competing Super Smash Brothers tournaments, uh, our local tournament organizer, he goes by DC, who is also a Smash 4 commentator. He was like, hey, Vicky, you want to commentate? And I was like, uh, you know what? I like talking and I narrate the game already in my head. So let's just do it. So I, I sat down um, with DC. We we're commentating top eight for this local and we had over 500 viewers uh, tuned into our local. And I, I think we like broke the viewership level of how like how many viewers you got at a local. 
because you know locals aren't crazy it's not like a national tournament or anything like that and from there i i got so much positive feedback so many words of encouragement that i was like you know what like i want to do this more and i started commentating more often on my local i want to say this proceeded for about um um two months before dc was like hey i got you a gig at a regional (laughs) <laughs> Which is unheard of, by the way. It usually takes a lot longer for people to go from locals to regionals. So and I was like, you into the deep end, then? yes, yes. He was like, here you go. Have the sharks. I'm like, wait, I don't want them. Though. <laughs> oh, OK, well, I'll take it. So um, it was a regional, I believe, hosted by MBG League. Uh, MBG, they hosted this tournament. I believe it was Frame Perfect, the very first Frame Perfect in this venue called like Monsters, Gods and Monsters. And um, I commentated this this event with. Uh, this gentleman, his name is Black Guy Gamer, and he next to me, he's I believe he's a football player. He's like six eight, and I'm five one. So side by side on the mic, you see us together, and he's like ten times like taller than me, like bigger. And I'm just like over here in the corner, and everyone's like, "Oh, look, Biggie Smalls," because Biggie <laughs> Smalls, <laughs> and we actually stuck by that name. We became like a duo. So it was Black Guy Gamer and I. We um, commentated this event. We had very good criticism, um, also constructive criticism that since it was our first regional, we had to take it in. And I took it with a grain of salt and I tried to improve myself in the future. And then Black Eye Gamer eventually down the line a few months later, he started concentrating more so on football um, as he uh, does football in college. I believe it's FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast. And I still continued with commentating. So we separated in our own ways to pursue our own things. And as I continuously commentated, I went from uh, more locals to more regionals to my first national, I believe, was um, not even my first out of state event. It wasn't even a national. My first out of state event was hosted by VGBC, ran by Gimmer. Um, It was called Glitch. And it was only a side tournament that I commentated. And I was so happy. It was Glitch and it was a low tiers tournament. I had all the fun with it. Um, And then from there. I went from doing out-of-state small tournaments to out-of-state bigger tournaments. I believe my first one was Super Smash Con 2016. Then it went from Super Smash Con to CEO 2016. And so on and so forth. I started doing just strictly nationals at that point. That is awesome. Like, Yeah, it, it was super fun. It all started with just competing with friends and local friends in my friend's living room, doing side bets and being cocky and prideful. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And what's funny is your that at least the beginning of that story with Smash, like it seems like that's such a common theme with Smash players that like, yeah, I think we're pretty good. And they go to a tournament and just get ruined. Just get yeah. ruined. And so yeah. so I'm gonna jump ahead in our in our questions here. What advice would you give somebody? Because like you just kind of jumped into it. Like you just like you just started what advice do you give somebody that's like, Hey, I want to start doing that. What, where do they go? What do they do? Um, since I started with locals, this is how I picture it. It's like a map. You just get a concept map. And I would say go out to locals and play because I absolutely would not have been able to commentate Sash. This is the reason why I don't commentate melee. I can't commentate a game that I've never played. I need to play the game to learn. I learn the best with hands-on experience. You could talk tech to me all day and I will look at you with the most dumb face because I won't know what you're saying unless I see it visually in front of me and I could perform it myself. So before I could talk about somebody else's play, I need to recognize that play from experience. So I would say start competing, go to locals, then from there, commentate your locals. Commentate regularly. And if you start getting better and you start taking in that constructive criticism, you will understand what constructive criticism is versus just hate because you're going to get hate no matter what, no matter what. And that means you're doing something right. People get upset over anything. So as long as you take in the constructive criticism and you apply it to your commentary, you go from locals and then your state will know about you because Smash community is, although it's big, it's still very close and tight knit because it's grassroots. So then your local big TO will hear about you and they'll be like, okay, let's have you on for regional. And from regionals, you go to nationals. I would call it the step-by-step process, locals, regionals, then nationals. And as long as you're able to perfect your craft within each of those different categories, you'll get better overall as a commentator. I love it. I love it. Let's, let's focus a little bit on, on the hate. Okay. Not that we want to like, 
you, mm-hmm. you guys will understand. We talked about this a little bit beforehand. A lot of times gaming is like a boys club, right? And we're slowly seeing that, that shift. I wish it would shift faster, honestly. And what's it been like for you having to deal with that um, online and with people? I mean, if you're doing, if you're doing locals and you're doing these things, you're having interaction with people. Have there been times that it's been like uncomfortable or, or are people in real life a little more cordial than they are on the uh, social media? Yeah, I would say the last part, especially I've never had a, a, a situation occur in real life where um, anything that I see online has ever happened to me in person. Um, a plot to that, hopefully, knock on wood, yeah, never let's, happens. Let's keep that going. Um, but uh, I've never, oh, sorry, computer just like died. You guys still see me? All right. Yeah, you're there. Um, yeah, you're good. Um, sorry, I went on sleep. Uh, I've never had a, an issue in person where uh, someone has been disrespectful to me. I guess the most you could get is. Uh, when you're at a tournament and I'm playing somebody and you beat them, sometimes they can get a little salty because they undermine you. But overall, like since people have heard of me and that they've seen me commentate, they don't get as mad anymore. I'm pretty sure other girls have had their experiences with something similar to that online, though, different battleground. I have definitely had uh, problems with people online, um, either undermining like the Invitational would be a prime example of that where. Uh, unfortunately, other commentators who are the top of the top commentators of our scene were not picked because um, Nintendo was going for more of a marketable, trying to go for a more mar- marketable technique rather than uh, getting the most technical commentators out there where they're broadcasting to a more general audience of all ages. Um, so a lot of people were upset, but instead of questioning the other commentators, they automatically questioned me. And a lot of people pointed that out. Actually, it wasn't even me. So I had to go over my credentials and every other games that I've done with other companies that I've worked with, whereas my um, coworkers didn't need to do that necessarily because people already assume that they, you know, they belong there. Um, situations like that really brought in some light into the community where I kind of don't want to get involved into uh, controversial stuff like that. So I try to not try to bring in any negative light because the community sometimes has a lot of negative light shined on it. Mm-hmm. But um the negative comments always speak louder than the positive ones. And although I get negative comments, I know a hundred percent that I get more positive comments than negative comments. So for the past, I want to say two and a half years as an individual, I could thank the smash community for really helping me build that steel skin because before this community, I would have cared a thousand times more about what people say rather than how I am now. Because I've recognized that as long as I keep getting hired to do the jobs that I do and I get advice from my colleagues and take that in um, to proceed into my commentary career and use that criticism um, from my colleagues only, really, I know that I am doing a good job. And it, it could be tough. It's been tough on other women I've seen. And it's unfortunate because it, it's not a good look. It actually makes people not want to get involved. But people see me commentate regardless of whatever Twitch chat is saying or whatever any chat is saying in general, YouTube comments, anything. And they're like, you know what? I like what she's doing. And I've had women, random women, even little girls. I never forget a little girl who came up to me at Frame Perfect 2 with her father say, look, daddy, look, daddy, it's Vicky. And I was like, oh, I was so (laughs) happy. I was so happy. I thought it was the cutest thing that it's ever happened to me in my career. And I actually was going through a hard time for something similar when I, this was the process when I was very, very like concerned over what other people were saying. And I actually wanted to take a step away from the mic and I didn't want to commentate anymore. That little girl literally brightened everything for me. That was like a sign when I was like, I can't stop. Like I need to keep going because of generations like this. Because it's not a boys club. Like, girls are getting involved. I just play the game because I love playing the game. Play, I said it earlier. I played the game since I was a little kid with my little sister. Yeah. Um, and I want to continue doing that. And I want other people to do it without being afraid. Because people will always say whatever they want. And if you're successful, regardless if you're a boy or girl, they're going to be talking about you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Crawler had the same response as that little girl. Like when I said you were coming on the show, he was like, it's Vicky. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, oh my gosh. <laughs> that no. literally keeps me going. I love, I love kids. I love kids so much. No, it's great. And I mean, and you didn't, you did a, you did an excellent job. Like all you, 
the all three of you guys at the uh, at the Smash Invitational, you guys knocked it out of the park. I mean, everybody involved watching those things live, like it looks like somewhat like organized chaos and you guys have to be able to like keep it together like on the fly and it's 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 amazing to watch describe that experience for us like being being at the invitational you know what let's backtrack this a little bit when you got the call that you were going to be on there what were you what was that what describe the emotions describe that uh that day i actually did not think i was gonna get hired for the invitational and everyone called me crazy for thinking but I had my justifications for it. And it was because um, I've worked with them already so much in the past. Although I didn't do their Smash 4 Invitational, I worked with them so much in the past already that I thought that they were going to probably get different people. Um, which I actually think is partially why they didn't hire some people for this Invitational. Because they wanted to mix the talent. We have so much talent in the scene that they wanted to mix it up. So I didn't think I got the, co- I got the good job because um, the person who usually contacts me contacted me. And instead of saying, hey, we want you to work the event, he said, hey, so are there any other girls that commentate nationals? And I was like, oh, I'm about to give him my replacement. (laughs) (laughs) And the thing is, the thing is, it's actually unfortunate. There are no other girls who commentate nationals. I am literally the only one. And I have been pushing so hard for more of them to be on. Uh, actually, I get more comments now saying that they're commentating local, trying to really hard. So do, again, as we talk, locals, regionals, nationals, and they're trying one of those girls being Sinpai, who has been commentating a lot more often now, very proud of her. And she has such a good voice to do it too. Um, and I was like, there isn't, but I did give a suggestion where um, there's a pro uh, player. Her name is Supergirl Kels. The only top level Super Smash Brothers player that exists out there who's female, Supergirl Kels. I said to them on the phone, no, there are no other girl commentators that do nationals. But if I could tell you or suggest any female who I believe could have the potential of being perfect on the mic, it would be Supergirl Kels. Because not only is she a pro player, so she could give you pro player insight, but she understands the game. And they were like, okay, okay. So any other, any other people? And I gave them like a list of commentators. They're like, okay, sweet. Well, well, we'll talk to you soon whenever we want. I'm like, okay, bye. And I thought to myself, well, I gave them my replacement. But you know what? I was able to work with them so many times that I'm not even mad. I have had the opportunity, so other people should too. And then um, I want to say they called me back like three weeks later. And it wasn't even the original person that called me. Uh, another person. They're like, Hey, what's up? It's been a while. I'm like, hey, I know. What's up? Like, it's different over there in Seattle. Like, you know, how's the season over there? He's like, oh, it's pretty cold, you know. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, so do you want to work the Smash Brothers Invitational? And I was like, no (laughs) way. I was like, I don't know if Nintendo's been trolling me. Like, I've been, I basically gave up all hope, to be quite honest. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to get hired for this. Because they even reached out to me to contact MK Leo and Mr. R. But they didn't reference me at all. They're like, yeah, can you get us in contact with these two players? Thank you. We need them for something, but we can't tell you. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, (laughs) okay. And I'm like, super not okay. (laughs) I I was so happy to be able to work with them. And so when I finally got the call, I honestly was like, this is insane. I can't believe I had to keep it a secret for like two months. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. It was it was tough. It was very tough. I found that I I think I found that like in late March. And then uh, I don't think I actually think we waited three months before it was announced. Yeah. Three months before it was announced. That's so that's so tough. I think it was end of May when the the tweet went out from Nintendo about all the commentators. Yeah. Yeah. It was slightly after uh, get on my levels at the end of May. But yeah, I was it was crazy. Describe the experience of commentating the Invitational. I was so nervous. I've done a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like I did um, the Evo broadcast where it was uh, doing top eight on Disney XD and ESPN. And I didn't sleep for that event for four days. Wow. It was tough because I was freaking out like television. Like, you know, I could become a meme overnight. I can't mess this up. <laughs> 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 but um, for the Invitational, this was this is my favorite game. Like I was working with my favorite company on my favorite game. I can't mess this up. I was freaking out. And (laughs) the community's father was standing right next to me, Sakurai. And I'm like, 
that sack. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't freak out. Don't freak out. I'm okay. <laughs> it's just Sakura. He's just a person like me. I'm just a person. <laughs> and I was like, okay, be cool. Like we had a bunch of rehearsal times. Um, for the most part, it's felt very comfortable working with them because I've worked with the same production crew before. I believe uh, Chris Seglia was behind it. He also um, does Evo production. So it was very comfortable for the most part. And it felt like the same invitation that I did uh, last year for Pokin and Arms. Um, but this was Smash. Like this was this game I've been all hyped for like for the end of time. So I, I didn't believe it was coming up so soon. So hearing that it was, it was an honor. It was an honor to be on stage, to be one of the first commentators to commentate the game. What do you what do you think of the the format? Uh Mr. Cool Red Luigi talked about it in our uh Twitch chat here for a little bit. But Watch, watching it happen, I, I thought it was really cool format how they did the mixed doubles and then the free for all and all that just showcasing Everything. also I- items and and all the different stages and the smash of the the ultimate and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was really cool. Um, I personally like the setup. I, I like because the, they were able their whole job at the invitational people like have to remember is to sell the game. They're broadcasting a new game and they're selling it whether it be to the competitive scene or the casual audience. So they needed to showcase everything. They needed to showcase free-for-alls, items, assist trophies, all that stuff. Um, I think it was a good idea because what they did with uh, Winner's Bracket is, um, if I recall correctly, it was no items, smash ball on. And it was same uh, competitive format in terms of competitive doubles, where it was 2v2s, team attack on. I forgot how many minutes it was, and I believe the stock count was like, three or four for doubles i know for singles it was three which i agree with i believe it should stay with three um i hope i hope they do that for online i i, I do get, too get I, I, or we could change it ourselves or something. i don't know but i definitely think competitive setup should be three socks um and that's what they did it with i also like the fact that losers bracket had items um that's when they were able to showcase the items so it's basically like hey guys don't lose because if you lose then the match may not be very official <laughs> after that point the, cha- the chaos starts <laughs> and then with the special um guests the special guest features with the celebrities and the sports players and the personalities um they were able to do the free for alls as well as the cosplayers that they brought in so they were able to interact with fans um celebrities everyone's favorite people up on stage and um, I think that was a really good call on their part because then they were able to showcase uh, more to the casual scene. And then they see the pro players playing the pro scene, um, playing more so in the pro scene format. And um, that was a good call from them. And that's also a statement from Nintendo saying that they, they're they looking at the competitive scene, which is the mm-hmm. concern that the competitive scene had for since Melee, since the beginning of Melee. Yeah. 13 yeah. years over that. So, so that that, that kind of ties into my main question, I guess, that I have with so with all the changes that we've talked about that are coming to this game and then all the characters and all that kind of stuff and the speed and just the overall changes that have come about that we that we at least know about so far. Do you do you feel like all the different communities that we currently have can merge and adopt this game? Do you think this game can bridge that gap and bring the melee players that have just stuck in the past playing that game over to, to everything with, with everybody in a perfect world, I would say, yes, I would love that. Like that's all that, I think that's honestly what Sakurai wants. And that's why he brought up all, that's why he brought back all the characters. It's basically his statement. I have speculation actually that the reason why he's doing that is because he wants to make this game to go out with a bang. And my speculation is that this may be the last game he's behind. And that's why he wants to do that. And that's why he's implementing um, more so different melee mechanics into the new game, but in different way. Like, you know, there's no wave dashing. There's basically just wave landing with lag. Um, I want to say in a perfect world, yes. But being melee, if you ask a melee player, what is your favorite game? 90% of them will say melee. Because what other person is going to play the same game for 13 years and not have it be their favorite game. Right. So yeah. I I would say that maybe it would bring more Melee players to play the new game rather than because a lot of Melee players didn't like Brawl, didn't like Smash 4, and it all has to do with the pacing of both games. Either they're too slow, either there's not enough combo game, um, mechanics, movement mechanics don't matter. So with Ultimate coming about, I want to say that 
mechanics are going to matter more. And then they're implementing both um, the movement mechanics from Melee and the neutral game from Smash 4 and bringing them together to hopefully create a new game that has the perfected version of Smash 4. Yeah. I heard a lot of Melee players complain about the new game and uh, they basically don't want to make any final judgment calls until the game is finally released. But it's mostly because of the fact there's no wave dashing like there is in Melee. Um, there's not L canceling for what we've seen so far. There's nothing like that. Um, so because of that, there's complaints of only based on the moving speed, the movement speed of the game um, in terms of it not being like Melee. So I want to hope that maybe some people could overlook that and still play the game and maybe they could discover hidden technique themselves like they did in Melee years ago and potentially bring the community get together because imagine a tournament, a big FGC tournament with Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, Dragon Ball, all these games, and then you see Smash Brothers Ultimate with like 7,000 entrances. Can you imagine how insane that would be? I think that would actually bring in not only developer support like crazy, but it would bring in crazy amount of sponsors and money to everybody. Um, but then you're ri- also like, you have to consider both sides. You're also risking the livelihood of the top, you know, five gods of Melee, Hbox, Armada, Leffen, um, Mango, all these guys. And now they have to get out of their comfort zone to compete in a new game where there's already gods of in Smash 4 that are now also going into the new game and their livelihoods depend on Melee, but are they willing to also extend to Smash Ultimate is a question. So I would yeah. say I would really hope so, but if I want to think realistically, unfortunately, I don't think it would be enough. What are your impressions of Ultimate? You love it? <laughs> I love this game so much. I think it's the best. I think it's actually the best Smash game. I think it's honestly, I can say that so confidently that I think that Smash Ultimate is going to be the best Smash game. Is it a port? (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Absolutely not. It is not a port because of how different it is. It may look similar to Smash 4 with pretty graphics, but it plays so differently. And people won't understand that until they get their hands on it first, I say. Um, the, just the balloon knockback. I call it the balloon knockback because um, you do even one slight hit at low percent and the opponent will go flying. Similar to a balloon with helium, when you let it go in a room, it goes crazy that's how i see it as yeah. um in smash ultimate it's very similar i call it balloon knockback because you get sent flying to anything and um that's could be a double-edged sword because then it's like how are you gonna combo things like what's the end goal of the game like are you trying to just make sure they don't they don't stay off stage and they can't air dodge certain things um because of the end lag to air dodge that they added um i love the game i think the game has a very, very successful future. And I think Nintendo getting involved, especially with esports, is going to carry on its success. The chat is currently banning me for asking you if it was a port. I just, <laughs> that's, I just want to let you know. They are, they are calling for my head right now. So, <laughs> Vicky, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your experience, share your history with Nintendo and uh, just, just for talking to us over the last hour here, can you go ahead and let people know where they can find you? Absolutely. And you guys could check me out. Um, posting mostly on Twitter at, at Vicky Kitty underscore, as well as Twitch. Um, if you guys didn't catch at the beginning, it is Vicky Kitty, just Vicky Kitty, my tag all together, no space. Um, and it's been a pleasure, Josh. I really appreciate you both having me on here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Crawler, where can we find you, bud? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Nightcrawler724, Nightcrawlers without the E. Uh, also hanging out in Josh's Discord. And then also on Friday afternoons uh, in the Smash Bros. cast. There you go. All right, guys. Our normal co host, your hero, he's not here, but that's Hate Zero. You can follow him on Twitter at Hate Zero. You can follow me on Twitter at N64 Josh. You can follow this podcast at N Powercast. The show notes for this episode that will have the links to Vicky and uh, her Twitch and her Twitter, N64Josh.com slash NPC108. If you want to email the show, you got a question, comment. I know I've got a few that we're going to get to next week, just so I know that you guys that have written in are maybe wondering. 
We're going to talk about them on this uh, on Tuesday night. The email is npc at n64josh.com. Remember, get yourself a free book from Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash npc. Pick up Blood, Sweat and Pixels if you want to hear about just the the insane the stories that go into the games that you love blood sweat and pixels it's great the chair i'm sitting in guys from op seat go to n64josh.com slash op seat that link will save you ten dollars okay they're great chairs i love them i wouldn't recommend them if i didn't love them so check them out I do have a Patreon. If you want to get yourself an extra show, you go to patreon.com slash n64josh. For just a dollar, you get an extra podcast. Five dollars gets you a, a video podcast. Join the Discord. Nightcrawler mentioned it. n64josh.com slash Discord. Come hang out with us. We have a great time talking Nintendo, talking everything. Like, nothing's ever really on topic. It's just always fun. <laughs> and it's a safe place. I've I've seen multiple comments like, like this is one of the least toxic discords I've ever been in. Like we really, we have good mods. We're doing the best we can to make sure everybody feels welcome and they can, you know, just come talk about Nintendo stuff. Like we're just there for a good time. Sometimes stuff gets really real. Sometimes people are like, Hey, I'm dealing with some stuff We're like, Hey, let's talk about it. You know, like you just never know, but it's a safe place. And uh, we love hanging out together and playing games. I see people ta- in the Fortnite channel all the time. Like, <laughs> I'm looking at you, Mr. Red Luigi, Nintendo David 64. Uh, who else do I see for Maxis all the time? Lumber Joke. You guys are you guys are slaying in Fortnite. So um, hopefully you get some wins, guys. Um, everybody, thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next episode.